All right, people. Uh, we got this car back. Uh, there's shops closer to her. They charge more money. Downfall for me to do it, though, is it takes a little bit longer because I'm weather dependent. This is a do-it-yourself video. You do not have to take this to a shop. You need minimal tools. And the only thing is that you have to watch for, and we'll go that now, this is called a double flare. Some people call it an inverted flare. Some call it a double flare. It looks like that. Inverted flare, double flare, same thing. I'm not going to get into an argument over it. You can Google that. Now, this is what they call a bubble flare. Now, there's two different kits. This is an inverted or double flare kit. This is a bubble flare kit. This is an 05. Haven't seen one of these before. I'm the, I actually had to go and buy a tool for it and Wife's like, all the tools you have, yeah, I had gone by. So I bought a bubble flaring kit. And the reason we did that is because if you look at in here, I bought, there they are. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to show that way you know. Take this out of the packaging. So, now, if you look down in there, you will see there's a cone, but it's pointing up at you. Well, the cone up takes the double flare. This just goes in here, and then you screw the nut down until it's tight. A bubble flare, and the fitting is on here. There's one... This, these here are the inverted or double flare. You will see the threads come all the way up. Sorry, if I could get one. You can see the threads come all the way up to the top. On the bubble flare, you cannot interchange the fittings. You have to have either bubble flare fittings or the inverted flare double flare fitting. Here, the threads do not come all the way to the top. You got that open. That is a bubble flare. Now, I have to go with bubble flares on this because this is the brake line that allows the suspension movement on the back. And that is set up for bubble flare only. So, we are going and we did buy... You can buy pre-made lines for this. Well, her intermediate line is the one that failed, but they're not much better on the rear axle. It's $109, because there's two. Once we get to here forward, the lines are good. So I cut them, and I'm not going to, it's $109 for a pair of those intermediate lines. Well, that's fine, but then the short line from the rubber to the uh, actual brake drum, those are rusty. This here, that's $109 just for those two lines, not counting that little short piece of line and that. These here were $15 a piece to buy those new. <clears throat> that was $27. So, all we have to do is cut this to the length we need, bend it. You don't have to be, don't just grab it here and, oh, oh, it kinked. You have to work the bends. I do have a tubing bender. I got to find that if I can't. I normally bend them by hand. I put, when you're doing this, just go here. And you just slowly work the bends you need. It's not super complicated. Don't rush it because if you kink it, you can't use it. So all said and done for uh, these fittings here 
their stupid price. Uh, I ordered these off Amazon. I got a pack of the bubble flare fittings and I got a inverted pack of inverted flare fittings because where I tap it up here, I'm going to use inverted flare. But once I get back here to all the stock stuff, I have to use the bubble flare. And uh, 27 or 29, these here were, the rubber lines were 15 a piece. And so we're, then uh, if you got a set of these wrenches, they're called flare nut wrenches. These work great for doing brake lines because they, they can still slide off a nut if it's super tight. But we're not saving any of the old stuff, so I don't have to try worry about undoing. I'm just cutting the brake line using a socket. To put it back together, I'll be using these. So I'm going to get this jacked up. This is the, one of the brake lines we pulled out. I already cut the end off, but this is how rusty it is. It actually blew a nice size hole in it. I don't know if it's going to pick it up, but right there by my fingernail is the hole. So, I mean, it was dumping fluid big time. But, you know, this is crap. I did notify her that the other side wasn't any better than this side. She was driving home from work. She lost her brakes. And she goes, I don't want to do that again. So, let's just fix it and that. But the rest of the system's fine. It's just from here back. Which is typical if you live in a rust belt. But... You don't have to take this to a shop. I mean, $100 for all the parts, and I got more than enough line. You don't have to. You can buy the line kits, but I bought everything for $100. You're going to pay. Those two lines were $109. I didn't, once I saw that price, I didn't even price the short line to the drum and that. These here you do have to buy, unfortunately. But these weren't super bad, 15. So that's where we're at. Let me get this jacked up and uh, we'll get some more brake line out and then we'll get some cut and bent and then we'll show how to flare them. All right, the rubber lines I showed earlier for the suspension to move are these here. You got a clip here and a clip here. This brake line overall looks pretty good till you get right here and I can flake the rust off of it. Now, there's no sense, but it's still to cut it here and then you're just adding another joint. I'm doing that up here because that's gonna save a lot of money in brake lines, but to do it here, there's no point. So all we gotta do is get these clips off. And just put a screwdriver in there and they're gonna just basically like that there and just there and you'll have a clip here and a clip here same thing on the other side you're gonna have two clips once some clips are removed you can pop this rubber line out put the new line well what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop, take this line out. I'm going to pop this line off because I'm going to do this side, then that side. When I go under here to run this line, I'll do them both at the same time. But now I'm going to undo this line. Do undo it here, and I already loosened it here. I just got to undo it here. And then I'm going to take this to the workbench, and we're going to make this line. So when we put this line in, we'll put the rubber hose in also. This tool's to set up to go in your vise. You lock it down. I have this bar upside down right now because what you're gonna do, you want that nice and level for your start. So put it upside down. There we go. Now we know we got a nice flat working area. Now, we're still not going to go and start on this, because now, what we do, you're going to take a file and bevel that edge. The work flare we're working on right now is the bubble flare. So just go around and give that a little bit of a bevel all the way around. 
Now, take a knife or some blade. You're going to go through here. You're going to do the same thing to the inside. Now, this one isn't as critical yet because we don't have a flare or a flare here or here. So, but get in the habit, put your fitting on first. So now we're going to turn this over, clamp that in there. You're going to take and put this, this is going to fall under the, if you put it in the 6 millimeter, it's just way too big. So this is going to go into the 4.75 millimeter side for the, because this is 3 16 brake line. Go ahead and get this hooked. You want it so it can still slide right, right now. You're going to take this tool that comes in the kit, and you're going to lay it across there. And you're going to run this hose up till it's tight against this little area right there. So then, tighten this up. Before we crank down too far. Now... Crank this side down first, so it's tight. Then you're going to come and do this side. Now, you want the size that's going to fit in there. We're using the 4.75, so it's going to be the 4.75. So now, you're going to take back this... Trying to get back this off so you can screw this piece down in there. Now you gotta take your wrench. And snug that in there. Now you have to back this all the way off. Like I said, this is a simple do at home. It's not overly complicated. You just got to figure out what flare you need. Now you got to put that in there, wind that up. Now just get it square. Just take this down till it stops. Don't crank on it. See, right there, it stopped. You'll feel it stopping. Don't, oh, you don't have to do that. So, I'll get this out of here. I'll get this out, and I already took the old rubber line off. This is the one we're doing first. So, I'm going to set the camera up, bring that line over, and we're going to start doing the bends for this line. So, I'll be right back. Okay, just quick. Now, you can see this is blown out here. Not, I mean, that's the bubble flare. Holes there, and it bellows it out. This here kind of bellows it out, but it flares it out if you look. And then that, because that's the double flare. Now, if you put them side by side, I'm going to bring the camera over here. Uh, this is a 5 16 line. This is 3 16 on the car. But you can see the difference. And this car has the bubble flare. So, now, before we start bending this, what we're going to do, put this over here. Because this is the side we're going to bend from. So we need to come up. And we need to do 
a 90 degree right about there. Don't rush it. Just slowly work it. And you may not get as tight of a bend 90 as the factory did, but that's okay because you got a little bit of room to put these in. So there we are right there. Little, you know, it's bowed this way yet, but we haven't started bending that. But just right there, that simple bend, you can see we're already pretty close. Now we need, and bend these, you know, just don't keep bending because this has to sit this way. So we need a bend here going off this way. So we're going to grab it there. And you don't want to kink it. If you kink it, start over. This is 25 feet. It's more than enough for what we're doing. I mean, you can't make a ton of mistakes. <laughs> don't get me wrong. But you got some room for air. So now we're going to hold this up here again. Now we want to go off this way right there. And like I said, just slowly work it. Don't... Don't just bend it, just using the tip of your thumb. That's all you need. Straighten that out so we can get a better idea. So, a little touch mo too much of a bend, so we'll just go back a little bit. And that has come that way a touch. I mean, this stuff is metal. You have room to work it. So don't don't sweat if it's not 100%. You can do the final fitment on the car. This is just getting you so you're in the right area. And we'll need a sharp bend right there. So, now, same thing. I'm going to straighten this out here a touch. We're going to take... Since this is the line that was already on there, we didn't cut this one. But we're just going to... Give it a slight bevel. You don't have to grind all the coating off because this is coated line. You just need a little bit of a bevel. Same thing. Put a little bit in there. Now, I already put the fittings on here. That is going to do you no good if you do this. I just did this for trial so I knew which ones I needed. Anyone who tells you they've never forgotten this, don't exactly trust their honesty. Because I've been doing this a long time. Even when I was working in a shop, I still did it on occasion. It sucks. You just did all that work to make your flare. Got it. Didn't crack the line. So... Put that piece on there. Now it's on there. All right, I'm going to set this up in the flaring tool. I'm not going to show doing each flare. We'll get back to it once we're under the car. One thing I didn't say that I should point out, when you set this up in these tools, you're really putting a lot of force on it. So don't be afraid to, once you get this hand tight, do a couple cranks because this is pushing down on that line. It's going to try pushing that line down. So don't be afraid to do a couple cranks. Tighten this side. You don't have this side super loose, but tighten this side and then come in over here and do this side. There. And all right, I'm going to get this flare made and uh I'm going to grab a water because I forgot to bring one out, and I'll see you guys under the car. All right, there it is. I haven't pushed the clamp on. Like I said, don't worry about these top. Just get that hose up, and then just get that in there. Like I said, you might have to tap it.
you'll know it's on because this top piece don't go in the groove he'll just fall right down flat and that's there you go so then we'll take our brake line since it is a little rusty under here i don't want to leave them open that's why i'm not going to put this side up yet because i don't want any rust falling when we get ready to do that mid ship piece of brake line we'll put this end in and put the clamp on it so but there it is and now once this is totally in here if you want a little bit more room for the shock just grab it again don't be kinking it you can manhandle a little bit so i just gotta tighten this is all the way in i just gotta tighten up i'll put this one in and i'll get this tightened up and then we're gonna go over to the other side and I'm probably not going to film that side because they're both going to be the same. The only difference is going to be is this midship line where it comes through. It runs farther over to because the line runs all the way over to that rubber line like this on that side. But otherwise, it's going to be the same thing. Uh, just simple hand bends. So like I say, you don't need no complicated tools. You can cut this with a hacksaw because you're filing it anyway and uh there we are and so i'll show now when i get go to put this up uh, here and do that mid piece line i'll show how to do the double flare that i'm going to use up here uh, this piece i showed how to do the bubble flare and i'll show how to do the double flare when we come back uh, when we make them lines there so all right we'll see you in a while okay i will say this is a customer car i'm glad she trusts my recommendation but i don't know how well that's picking it up there's a nice uh cut there uh there's a couple cracks in it i don't know if this is gonna pick up these little cracks one there there's it was caught on something at one time now whether it had snow or something because it's on both sides so i don't know if somebody did something under there working on it or what but and but there's a couple cracks in here there's one there so for the 15 dollars i told her i didn't i didn't see these here when i first told her i just you know we're going all this way yeah, it's another $30 because they're $14.95 a piece plus tax. So they're not cheap, but they're not super expensive. But, you know, since we're doing new brake line, I just felt we should do this. So, all right, okay. We're doing the double flare now. I changed the over to the other setup. I mean, they're pretty similar as far as clamping it having the threads in there to hold it the biggest difference is oh what i just do with it all right here this one you put down in the pipe this is for the bubble flare and it comes in it goes there and you just tighten it down to do the double flare you're going to put it in the uh, thing, and you're going to set that there. You want it up as high as that little lip there. So that sits on top. Then when you put it over, you're going to set that so that little pin goes down in your line. Now they're size specific, so you want to make sure you get the right size. Now... Then this, you're going to screw down. Make sure you got it pretty square on there. You ain't going to crank till you can't do anymore. Once it bottoms out like that, stop. And then just ease it back. Now, the smaller the line, it may not work. It work. This piece gets stuck. You can see if you're doing bigger line, so this gets stuck a little bit. Just slowly work it out like that. 
and you will see it looks similar to the start of a bubble flare. But where it becomes the double flares, because now you flared it in, now you're going to put this on it, and you're going to go and tighten it down a second time. And again, just take it down till it's pretty snug. I mean, you're gonna have resistance. You're bending too. The bigger the line, but you're gonna know the difference between, oh, it's bottoming out and that. So, and there is a double flare. Now, the double flare, like I said, that will go, where's that union? It takes a different fitting up here. This fitting's different, but the cone will come at you. Now, the reason I'm putting a double flare up here on this is because this union here already, do not use compression fittings. I can't emphasize enough, don't do it. This thing was already, and that's it uh i gotta get this line this one goes to the uh right rear and then i'll do the left rear and then we'll go and uh we'll bleed the brakes now you can bleed the brakes solo i bought a, a brake bleeder i just got the cheaper from harbor freight i'm having zero problems with it working if you have two people then you can do it the old way where somebody pumps the brakes and you do the fitting and squirt, squirt out. You do that three times. Start at your farther. Well, you bleed your ABS. Then you'll come back here to the right rear, left rear. Then you'll do the right front, left front. And that. And if you're replacing the master, then you'd bleed your master, then your ABS, and then right rear, left rear, right front, left front, and that. So, but... There we go. And I did forget to put this piece on, but we haven't flared this end yet, so thankfully. Another thing, when you put these on, like this one I'm going to put on this way, because i got to feed it all the way down the end. But if I'm flaring this side, remember to put your threads out. Because if you put it on like this, it's going to do you no good. So... That's going to be pretty much it. I'll turn it back in the lines. And, you know, if you're doing this yourself, you're going to see where the old line came out. Put the new line same place. And, you know, doing this yourself, you're going to save a ton of money. Because the shop's used to I'm going to get these lines in. And we'll be back when we start bleeding. Uh, once this line is in, this is to the left rear. And that. I uh, started finding, I uh, cut it here, but there's the other piece. Uh, you can see it shiny. There was good metal after this point. So we're just replacing this rusted. I'm doing the whole rear axle all new. And that, that's all going to be new. I'm just not going all the way up to the ABS unit on it. So 